Hey, welcome to this uh, impromptu tasting. This was initially a what's in the box tasting, but the video quality was not what I wanted. So we are going to come back and taste this for reals. Make sure you are clicking on the subscribe button and the notification so you get alerted when I do these impromptu tastings. I am very spontaneous, and you never know when I am going to bust out uh, and do a tasting. So this is Kelbagan Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. Now, this is a very, you know, very famous, very important Irish distillery that really had, um, was kind of like it. It was the, it was the workhorse distillery for, for a long time for the Locke family. Uh, the Locke fan, the Locks become, you know, were really, were really, really important to the Irish whiskey scene. In terms of like their, their name prominence, they were as big as the Beams or the Walkers or anybody in whiskey. They were enormous. But in the 1940s, uh, basically their distillery got caught up in a big scandal and they actually end up being one of the major reasons why the Irish government fell in the 1940s. So, and it was really the Locke sisters uh, who were primarily behind it. They were got it caught up in some bribes and was part of like an Irish syndicate. So uh, really every time I think of Kelbegan, I think of kind of like the fall of, uh, you know, one of the, one of the regimes of the Irish government that would lead to, uh, it was actually a big part of the Irish versus Protestant issues that, you know, that Ireland would face for many years. But even it's not fair to say that Kelbegan or the locks were the reason behind it because they weren't, they were just played uh, a part in it, but I detailed that um, in my um, I detailed that in my book uh, Whiskey Women: The Untold Story of How Women Save Bourbon, Scotch, and Irish Whiskey. The Lock Sisters were kind of a uh, a story of something that didn't didn't really work out, but they were a very important family in the history of Irish whiskey. So uh, please feel free to ask questions as I'm doing this. I will be doing this a short, uh, doing a quick short tasting. Now, you may have already noticed that I did this. I already tasted this a little bit. So I am familiar with the whiskey. Um, it's really floral. This is a really floral Irish whiskey. Now, this is this is made of barley and oats. It's copper distilled, it's copper pot distilled barley. Oats and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of beautiful. I'm imagine like walking through a garden and you can you pick up a lot of these um, fun kind of like garden smells of of just flowers and bushes and the wind coming in and catching some of the pollen. Uh, it's a very pleasant nose, very pleasant. And then after that, it's kind of very citrusy. On the palate, just all sorts of honey, apricots, fruits. I'm a real big fan of the way that this is approaching my palate. It kind of gets on the tip of my tongue and just walks on back, and then a little spice there toward the back. So this Irish whiskey, this Kilbegan single pot still Irish whiskey, really beautiful stuff. Uh, you're looking for something to drink on uh, St. Patty's Day. This is a great, great, great pick. And for those of you who are bourbon fans, you might like that it's a little softer, it's a little lighter, and there's a whole lot of honey there. And if you're someone who loves flowers, you're going to love the nose. The fragrance on this is absolutely fantastic. So highly recommended. I kill Baggin. This uh, this this single pot still Irish whiskey, really good stuff. So good for them. It's nice to see the Kelbagan brand getting some um, some attention and to see the Locks heritage kind of being remembered. I'll go ahead and take any questions here. Mash and drub with the Irish whiskey seg segment growing so much and more higher proof releases hitting the shelves. What Irish whiskeys are your favorites now? 
I have spent some time in Ireland and I have tasted straight from the casks and I have tasted off the still. And there remains one bottle, one bottle that has always kind of shaped my my love for for Irish whiskey. And that is Red Breast. The Red Breast 21 year old expression is is one of the best whiskeys in the world every single year. Uh, I would also say that some of the Bushmills uh, single malt releases, the 16-year-old, the 21-year-old, those were also fantastic. Now, there was a peated, there was a peated release a few years ago called uh, Michael Collins that I liked a lot, but it got taken off of the, uh, out of the market. Um, it was caught up, uh, Sidney Franco, and then it was caught up in this big, this big lawsuit over like when, um, when that distillery got acquired, Cooley got, uh, acquired there was basically a big old stink about where the existing stocks went and michael collins got cut out of that rebecca page who decides whether or not a book of yours and which ones are featured on the book apps such as audible um i have no idea no idea who decides that stuff but i'm dying to know <laughs> i think it'd be kind of cool to find out because hey why don't you uh you know, once you recommend the old bourbon books a little bit more, not just mine, but all bourbon books, I'd be all about that. Well, I think that's going to call it uh, the night. Make sure you all are going checking out the Bourbon Pursuit page. We have some cool, uh, we have a, a live call in show coming up here in a few minutes. Make sure you're following me on the social medias and click the subscribe button here and make sure that you are getting. A notification so you know when I'm doing these crazy impromptu tastings that are actually a lot of fun. And Will brings up that Irish whiskey exports are up 8%. Do you think all whiskeys are growing that fast or is it just because Irish is so approachable? Um, Irish whiskey does grow really fast. You know, ja the Japanese whiskey market has grown exponentially as well. So, I mean, they're all growing pretty steadily. They're all doing really well. I'm going to be curious to find out, like, what are the growth trends on these um, these atypical whiskey mar markets, such as such as Mexico. Mexico has a bunch of whiskeys coming out. Argentina has some whiskeys. Uh, we don't really see a lot. I don't know what the growth trends are in Canadian whiskey, but I don't think they're very positive in comparison to Irish or bourbon. So I don't think it's all whiskeys. I think it's good whiskey. Well, that's going to do it for me today. Uh, thank you for helping me keep my streak alive. This um, I was very worried that I wasn't going to be able to provide something on Monday. But uh, here I am. We did it. Cheers.